then the engine section. So the, 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 the ship engine section consists of, of four, uh, Raptor, four, four vacuum Raptor engines and two sea level engines. So the, uh, all six engines are capable of gimbling. The, the engines with the high expansion ratio um, have a relatively smaller gimbal area uh, or gimbal range and a slower, and a slower gimbal rate. The, the two center engines um, are, have a, a very high gimbal range and can gimbal uh, very quickly. Um, and you can land the ship with either one of the two center engines. So when you come in for a landing, it will light both engines, but if, if one of the center engines fails at any point, it will be able to land successfully with the, with the, with the other engine. Uh, and then within each engine, there's a great deal of redundancy. Um, so we, we, we want the landing risk to be as close to zero as possible. Um, and then some basic stats about the engines. Uh, the sea level engines um, are about a 330 ISP at, at uh, sea level. The, the upper stage engine uh, is 375. Now, this is version one. So I think over time, there's potential to increase that specific impulse by five to 10 seconds. Um, and as I was mentioning, also increase the uh, chamber pressure by 50 bar or so. And then for refilling, we just saw uh, the, two, the two ships would actually mate at the rear section. Um, they would use the same mating interface that they used to connect to the, the booster on liftoff. So we'd, we'd reuse that mating interface um, and then and, and reuse the propellant fill lines that are used when the booster is, uh, when the ship is on the booster. Um, and then to transfer propellant, it becomes very simple use control thrusters to accelerate in the direction um, that you want to empty. So, um, so you, if, if you accelerate in this direction, propellant, propellant goes that way, and you transfer the propellant very easily into the sh from, the, from the tanker to the ship. So going to rocket capability. Uh, this gives you sort of a rough sense of, of rocket capability, starting off at the low end with the Falcon 1 at a half ton and then going up to BFR at 150. So it, I think it's important to note that BFR uh, has more capability than Saturn V, um, even with full reusability. But, but here's, the, here's the really really important fundamental point. Let's look at the launch cost. The, the, order, the order reverses. Now, now, at first glance, this may seem ridiculous, but, but it's not. The, the same is true of aircraft. If you, want to, if you, if you bought, say, a, a, a small single-engine turboprop aircraft, that would be one and a half to two million dollars. Um, to charter a 747 from California to Australia is half a million dollars. There and back. The single engine turboprop can't even get to Australia. Um, so a fully reusable system, like so a fully reusable giant aircraft like a 747 costs a third as much as an expendable tiny aircraft. In, in one case, you have to build an entire aircraft. In the other case, you just have to refuel something. So it's, it's, it's really crazy that we build these sophisticated rockets and then crash them every time we fly. This is, a, this is mad. I, it, so um, yeah, is the, the, this is, this is, I can't um, emphasize how profound this is and how important reusability is. Um, you know, and often I'll be told, but you could get more payload if you made it expendable. I say, yes, you could also get more payload from an aircraft if you got rid of the landing gear and the flaps <laughs> and just parachute it out when you got to your destination. But that would be crazy, and you would sell zero aircraft. 